afternoon everybody welcome back to the channel so I know uh, in a couple videos I've mentioned that I'm going to be helping my buddy Josh fix his John Deere 9600 combine and in fact a couple videos you guys have seen it sitting out behind the shop and have asked about it so what happened to this combine is the header reverser gearbox lost oil all the oil drained out of it and it smoked the gearbox so this just like its name says reverses the head so if you slug the head or feeder house you can push on a pedal on the floor and you can run it all backwards with this and eject whatever issue you have so the way this works is it's got a planetary pack that goes in here and it's got a reverser gear and there's a shifter fork so when this shifter fork moves it shifts the planetary pack and runs it in reverse so what happened was at some point now i'm not sure my john deere combine history maybe some of you guys can help me with this but the way i understand it at one time these reverser gearboxes just had oil in them with no circulation and it looks to me like at some point there was an update on this machine and they put a circulating pump and an oil cooler underneath the feeder house. So at some point they had eliminated the dipstick and they had come up with this deal which sat in a little holder back here and it had a tube. Well, what happened and the reason the oil came out of the gearbox was because the tube got ripped off by either a corn stalk or a stray tree limb or something, who knows. But all the, the gear oil drained out of the gearbox, Josh didn't know it until he seen smoke because it burnt the bearings out of it, or burnt the outside bearing out of it. So what I'm going to do to eliminate that from happening again is I'm going to just put a plug where this, this tube was and this valve was. That way, it's not gonna get ripped off again and we're gonna come up with a different way of checking the oil in the gearbox, uh, just to be safe. What I, told, what I told Josh, as long as you don't see any oil outside this gearbox or anywhere around it, every fall, he should just drain it and just put the amount of oil that's supposed to be in it back in it and call it good for the season. Because I think in the book, it says you only have to check this like every 200 hours. So I'm just curious in the comments if you could tell me if this was a update because I know a lot of these 9600s, 9400s, they had a lot of the, the 9410 and 9610 updates on them. But like I said, I'm not an expert on John Deere combines. It's not a cleaner or an IH sitting here, so I, I really don't know. So if you could tell me in the comments, I'd appreciate that. Um, and it makes sense that it would have a cooler on it because that's a small cavity of oil that gets run around and around a lot. So it'd be, it makes sense that it would have a cooler added to it. So anyways, what we're going to do is we have a good reverser box from Allstate's Ag Parts. We're going to pull all the guts out of it and we're going to put it back into Josh's um, because the housing's all good and that'll save us taking this off and that one's already partially tore apart. So the first thing we need to do, and I've already started this, is the shifter fork here. There are two nuts on the underside of the feeder house. There's just a uh, splicer link for a chain in there. I took that apart, took the two nuts off, and now I can pull this hub out. There's a shifter fork, there's a hub. Throw them out of the way. And now we'll go get the good parts out of the good gearbox and we'll start our reassembly. Uh, we have a new half of the one pulley because Josh got a little violent with it and destroyed it so he just bought a new half so uh, and we also have uh, the outer bearing that's in the good box and I'm going to reseal the outer seal the inner seal is not leaking or anything so I don't see any point in disturbing it everything seems good bearings tight we're gonna leave it alone I mean there's no discoloration or anything and in fact I think that's a sealed bearing anyways so I think we're good there, so we'll just leave it alone. So let's get over and I'll show you the new stuff. Okay, so we're over here at my messy workbench that needs cleaned up. But uh, this is our new takeoff. I shouldn't say new, it's a used, but a good takeoff from Allstate's Ag Parts. So what I'm going to do, these are the two nuts on the end of that shifter fork. We go ahead and take them off. Get that all out of the way. I'm going to pull this apart 
I've already got the bolts out. There's only two of them in it anyways. Push down that shift to the center. Well, I know how that goes. So that goes like so. And that's what actually shifts all this to make it turn in a different direction. So this is the old one right here. And as you can see, junk. I mean, the, the needle bearings are all out of the sun gears. I mean, it's trash. There was no hope for that. Josh asked me if I could salvage it, save it, and I said, that's just like a final drive on an excavator. Once they're toast, they're toast. There's no, there's no going back. So that's when he called all states ag parts and for 1500 bucks, he got what we see here. So we've got good parts to go back together. So I'm gonna clean these up a little bit. We'll take them back over there and we'll start to reassembly. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna take this apart, look it over, make sure sun gears are all tight everything looks good now we got to remember this is a used this is a used uh, reverser so it could have a little bit of movement in it but nowhere near as bad as josh's old one so we're going to take it over we're going to start putting it back on the combine and then we are going to change the seal on the shaft on this end but i want to put it all together first that way it holds it all nice while i tear that apart Okay, so we're back to combine now. We're going to start putting this back together. The first thing we need to do is our shifter fork and our hub. Get those put back in there. I did put a little lube on everything just so it wasn't going back to back in dry. Get that lined up. brake cleaner and we got to get some silicone around here so it seals okay so we're gonna go ahead and slide our gearbox on here I've got gasket maker on it it's not actually silicone flat spot on the front of this here that matches this flat spot here. Now we can go ahead and put some bolts in to hold it. There we go. And we'll put the right So the next thing we gotta do, we gotta replace this seal. So just to make things quicker, I took the impact and took most of the bolts out players in the shop so let's take this off we're gonna take it over we're gonna change that seal out seal it up and put it back together okay so uh we've got our seal replaced here i just used a seal driver nothing special and uh now i'm just gonna get some sealer put on there and then we'll get her put back together and get the bolts back in it Okay, so we're ready to put this back together. I used some 515 Loctite anaerobic sealer because of this oil groove in here. That's the way if the sealer does smush in there, it stays loose, it doesn't dry or anything, and the oil will wash it out. That way it won't plug anything up. I use this on the two cylinders for the uh, power steering pumps and things like that. This seal started on this shaft. I put a little white grease on that shaft just to just to make sure that it slid easily on there. And there are some little uh, bent metal deals that hold the pins in for the sun gears in there. Uh, those I just put a little uh, grease on them to keep them tacky so they stay in their spots. I didn't put too much grease in there because I didn't want them to get plugged up. The oil passage plugged up. 
I think that anaerobic sealer will be just fine. The only way anaerobic sealer sets up is when you tighten your your tolerances up and it smushes the air out and that makes it dry. So we'll get these put in. Tighten them up real quick here. Okay, now we can put our oil back in our gearbox. Okay, so Josh is going to put the oil back in the gearbox. Hold the bottle up so they can see it. I don't know where the video is going to be. It's right there. you got to get okay. used to this. So Sorry. go ahead and squirt her full. I got the plug out there. You can put it through that top plug if you want. but Yeah, it was. So John Deere recommends one bottle. And I'm thinking that's just for a combine that doesn't have the circulating system with the oil cooler. So I think we're going to put a bottle and a half and try to check it and see where it's at with that. So that is the John Deere GL580W90 is what they recommended to put in it. Can't find that anywhere for some reason in Josh's book. I don't know if the mice chewed that part out or, or what happened. So, Josh, you want to do an interview with us right now? Uh, maybe in a little bit. Maybe in a little bit? Maybe in a little bit. Okay, tell us. We'll do a walk around your 9600. You can tell us about it. How's that sound? I'm sure the viewers will enjoy that. Yeah, yeah maybe get a couple more John Deere combine guys to watch it. Yeah, maybe. Or I'm probably going to get probably yelled at in the comments for the way we've done this. But Oh, I need to also go through how to set the shifter fork in this. I've already done it, kind of a procedure. It's fairly simple to do though, so. The mice didn't chew those pages out, did they? No, luckily they didn't. But we need to get you a tech manual so we have more information for next time. You fill it too full? Is it full already? Uh, made a big bubble of it. Oh, oh, okay. Made a big bubble? <laughs> All right, he's going to finish filling it, and then we'll move on. Okay, so we have our gearbox all reassembled. Uh, it's pretty simple to uh, readjust it underneath. You push the shifter rod in, you tighten up your inner nut, and then you let the arm that shifts it with the spring tension go against it, and then you tighten it another full turn and then you jam the nuts that's basically all it is to adjust it um, now we have everything adjusted we've got oil back in the gearbox we put a little over a quart in we're going to try that i tried to check it with a tig welding rod and uh we've got oil in the gearbox definitely so josh is in the combine cab right now so i'm going to turn this by hand we can't put the pulleys on yet because we are short the keyways and the keyways were beat out of the old pulley and the old shaft and the keyways that we have look terrible. I'm not putting it back together with those. So I told Josh it's going to go outside and uh, he's going to get the keyways for it tomorrow because we got to bring the peat in because the peat needs a water pump so it can go back on a hopper bottom. So Josh is going to get the keyways tomorrow and we'll finish assembling and we'll carry on with the video. But we're going to show you how this works real quick. So we're in the forward running position. So right now, if you were to turn the combine on the, and engage the separator and feeder house, the feeder house would be running in its normal direction, right? You have it shifted to forward. So when I turn this, you'll see the feeder house is turning in the proper direction. Now Josh is going to shift it with his foot pedal in the cab, shifted. We're going to turn this forward like the combine would. Turn it, and it engages, and now you can see the Peter House chain is running backwards, and you also got to remember at this point, the head is also running backwards. So the rolls are running backwards, the uh, gathering chains are running backwards, so everything's in reverse to get a slug out or a stick out of a rail unit or something like that. So I believe everything's good to go to this point. 
until we get the keyways we need. Okay, so we finally got the rest of the parts we need to put Josh's combine back together. So we're gonna get it together real quick here. Loop that up a little bit. So I got the keyways I need. Put them in like so. Slide his new pulley half on. Let's see, we gotta get it lined up right. All right, so I got that on there. I had to hold the keyways in with a with a punch and uh, hold them while I slid it. But they're in now. I just gotta put this roll pin in. it together and I'm turn it to there take this sit this sit screw back out and there is a ball that I just dropped on the ground drop the set screw yep ball goes in the hole <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Another sit screw. Tighten it in good. Put another sit screw in there. We can put our belt back on. Got a lot going on this morning here at the shop. We're trying to put a water pump in the in the peat and doing this. So we get our belt back on. Josh has our other part of the pulley. You might as well throw it up there. Your hands are already nasty. Oh, my fingers are. And that'll ride out once you get tension on it with that spring. Show it in a little more. There you go. Okay, now we can go get the spring. Get this grease out of here a little bit. Um, wait a minute. What goes in there? Did you take anything out of there? Okay, so we got our plate on. Just gotta tighten the bolts. According to Josh, this is how it goes. Put this big spring on there, collapse that, and get the bolts back in it. That's gonna be a fun one. All right, let's figure that out. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get it on video because it was a real wrestle, but uh, we had to pull the big guns out. We went in the shop, got dad strength, and he actually collapsed that spring and pushed it in far enough that Josh and I were able to get the bolts started. We one hand.
our sprocket back on for our head drive. And we can put our bolt back in, which we gotta go get a socket to tighten that with real quick. All right, final bolt. And uh, the next time this happens, I want uh, Josh to bring it to me and I'll tear it apart myself so I know exactly the way things go back together. That's always the tough part about doing a project that somebody else tore apart. Because especially when you're not a veteran deer mechanic like I am, I'm not a veteran deer mechanic on John Deere Combine, so I never really messed with one. Okay. Belt still free. We don't want that belt to get stuck pinched so it's free so that's a good thing i think you're ready to uh start it up and try it and then we're gonna do a walk around the combine you're gonna tell about your combine okay josh is gonna run it we'll reverse it and see what it does also Lezinski. I farm about 400 acres. Uh, uh, this is my first combine. Uh, 9600. I got it from uh, Barry McCockenert down the road. Um, he was getting out of farming so that's when I stepped in and, and bought this machine. Uh, I really enjoy it. Last year I had a walker go out but it had a slight crack so I ended up uh, Picking one up and so you got the Vegeto chaff spreader under here. That that's a nice addition. Really spread them bean pods and stuff out over the field. You know. Yeah, the turbo tube in the front too. That's a really yeah. Nice let's check addition. out. This is something that yeah. I I haven't seen on a combine that I've ever worked on. The turbo tube. It actually uh, sucks dust through the feeder house and blows it out here in front of the uh, drive tire. That way it keeps all the dust off your windshield and stuff. And the inside, you can see the fan. Yeah, and the fan. Yeah, there's a hydraulic fan up in there, kind of like a prop on an airplane. Sucks the dust right through. It makes a big difference, don't it? Yeah. Because you've run combines without it, and you say oh, it yeah. makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It blows almost all the dust that you would have coming off the head right, right out beside the front tire. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, nice combine Josh has got here. The straddle duels help a lot since it's not rear wheel assist going across the muck. Yep. Um, We've I, noticed that with 2388 makes a big difference straddle duels. Yeah. But this is this is actually I believe a 9600 and has the capability of being 12 row combine. Uh, capacity maybe one day. Uh, capacity it, wise, it's it a big runs machine. Eight row pretty good. I got an 893. Yeah. Uh, poly head. Because back in '81 was when they came out with the 8820 and they had a eight row or a 12 row ready I've package for them. Yeah. They're like 255 horse. I think a lot of people are running like 30 foot uh, bean heads on Yeah. I got yeah. 25. Foot. So in all reality, a 9600 is a 2388 basically. Yeah. And a, a 1680 or 1688 if you're case I think age. That the cab's uh, much quieter though going down the road and actually running the machine than like a 2388. Oh, you think so? Yeah. It's actually so quiet because when I bought this thing, I put the first dent in it. Because yeah. it's got the hopper extensions. Yeah. And uh, I was cruising down the road to do 27 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I noticed a tree branch and I didn't we smoked stop it. Uh, fast enough. But it just it, it just bent back the yeah. 
see the uh, extensions. The yeah, it's, extensions. it's got Maurer extensions, I think. I think that was... A, those little ones are? No, the whole ones? extensions. Okay. Yeah, they didn't... That's not a John Deere hopper extension up there. That's all aftermarket. I know, it holds quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, thank you for the interview, Josh. Hey, thank you for helping me. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. I appreciate it. So, you know what the saying is around dirt grain steel. If you can't find anybody else to help, and if you can find us, we can probably help you. So, anyways, we got to get back to work on the peat. Get that back on a trailer so we can uh, get hauling some grain. So, thank you for watching.